The most demanding application for a wristwatch that I'm aware of is maritime celestial navigation. It is a curiosity now as it has been made largely redundant by satellite navigation which is available everywhere. However, celestial navigation is still pursued as a backup and for interest and this requires knowledge of the time accurate to within one second. When far from shore, you are out of range of terrestrial transmission systems, so radio control clocks and network time on mobile phones won't work. You need a standalone timepiece. It has to keep time for many weeks because it takes a long time for ocean crossings and a sailing boat. These days, the market for accurate standalone timepieces is dominated by watches rather than clocks. There is a watch which is ideal for the purpose. The Citizen Calibre 0100 boasts an accuracy of one second in a year, or one part per 31.6 million. That's impressively accurate for any kind of electronic equipment, and for a wristwatch it's remarkable. However, it is a luxury product, and despite the price tag of $7,500, Citizen's small production run sold out in not much longer than it drifts in a year, so most of us have to manage with something else. I'm not a watch connoisseur, but it appears that apart from specific companies like Citizen that decide they're going to use maximum precision as a selling point, most watchmakers consider regular quartz movements to be accurate enough. So for most quartz watches, paying more money buys different styling or more expensive materials, but not more accuracy. This is why the $10 Casio F91W is the favourite watch of navigators. It's one of the most inexpensive watches, and yet it is as accurate as other quartz watches apart from specialist ones like the Citizen. It also contains a large battery for its size and will run for seven years or more on one battery. It's not absolutely precise though. The makers say it will drift by plus or minus 30 seconds per month at normal temperatures. However, the drift rate is pretty consistent, which is why navigators will rate a watch before using it to measure how fast it drifts and in which direction. Then they will set it to standard time at the beginning of a voyage and subsequently calculate the real time with an adjustment for its rating. So I bought a couple of F91Ws off eBay with this in mind and rated them. I started rating by setting all watches to true time. I use internet network time which is accurate to about 100 milliseconds. I then placed the watches face up indoors and every week for six weeks compared them to network time. To get a precise comparison I took high speed videos of them next to network time like this. That allows me to see when the seconds turn to within about 50 milliseconds which is more precise than network time itself. Then I used a couple of other steps. The first is to place the watches in a freezer for a week as temperature is the main determinant of drift to see how sensitive they are to cold and then place them on their side with the right hand of the dial down as they would be on the wrist with the arm hanging down for another week as position of the watch is also reported to affect the rating. The entire procedure takes a couple of months. The six week period is to determine the consistency of the rating to see if it changes over time. I did not use a precisely temperature controlled environment so rated two watches at the same time and assumed that any changes in rating simultaneously with both of them were due to temperature and any changes between them were not. I did this on my two F91Ws and found them to be disappointingly inaccurate, well outside their published specifications, both of them gaining more than two seconds a day. Not being a watch connoisseur, it never occurred to me that anybody would bother to fake such an inexpensive watch. But after consulting YouTube videos from the watch community, it was clear that I'd bought two fakes. So I went to Argos to get two real ones. While consulting these watch videos, I also found out that there is a more recent update from Casio which has some advantages that might make navigation easier. The W86. I thought perhaps it was more accurate too, so instead of buying two real F91Ws, I got one of each and rated them. Here are the results. Yellow and green are the fakes. Blue is the F91W and red is the W86. The real Casios are around 10 times more accurate than the fakes. The most accurate one was not the updated W86, but rather the original F91W, which lost one second per six days 14 hours and 40 minutes. 
the W86 lost a second per 2 days, 15 hours and 50 minutes. The two fakes gained a second per 13 hours, 30 minutes and per 17 hours, 30 minutes. In the freezer at minus 17.5 degrees centigrade, all four watches lost about 5 seconds per day when compared with their room temperature drift. All watches, including the fakes, had pretty consistent drift over the six weeks, and they also all had fairly similar temperature coefficients, shown here in parts per million per degree C. That's pretty impressively low temperature coefficients for a quartz crystal, so it looks as though the real and fakes either use the same kind of crystal or have the same kind of temperature compensation system, but the fakes aren't quite as good, which could be that they're using the same crystal, but ones that are a bit out of spec, so are cheaper. The difference putting them on their side was slight so that I couldn't tell positional change from that caused by temperature variations, so I will defer that analysis to another video. In this graph I've applied the rating corrections to the watches and you can see that they're all similar and would all therefore be usable for navigation. The build quality is way better for the real Casios and it's also easier to see the numbers, particularly at dawn or dusk when star sightings are taken. I'd put more faith in the durability of the real Casio in a boat for several weeks than I would in the fake. You can see from this graph of the two real Casios that the deviation in rating over the six week period was pretty much exactly parallel, suggesting it's virtually all due to temperature variation. That means if you need precision to one second for a voyage of many weeks, then you can get it for a few extra dollars. Get two watches and one of these inexpensive incubators for egg hatching that are under $20. Then rate them both in the incubator and use one as a wristwatch to take your sightings. I suggest a W86 for this. And the other, I suggest an F91W as a standard that stays in the incubator. Depending on power availability on board, you may have to insulate the incubator to keep its power consumption down. Both the W86 and the F91W have the same size numbers. Unfortunately, they make the seconds smaller than the minutes, but they're both quite readable. I have used both for taking star sights at dawn and dusk. The W86 is easier to read if you use the light, which is much better than the F91Ws. To do this, you need to put the watch on your right wrist. Operating a sextant requires two hands. You hold the sextant in your right hand and you use your left hand to move the index arm. You place the heavenly body just above the horizon at dusk or just below it at dawn. Then let go of the index arm with your left hand and move it to cover the light button on the watch as shown here. The moment the heavenly body touches the horizon you press the light button and note the time by looking at the seconds first, then the minutes. This photograph shows the lights of the F91W on the left and the W86 on the right. The F91W is deficient because the light is on the right hand side of the dial so fails to illuminate the most critical part of the display, the seconds. For that reason, if you're going to use the watch in this way, I suggest the W86 rather than the F91W. Another method of dawn and dust sighting is to rig up a battery and LED on the sextant with a button on the handle. When you note the time, you press the button with your right hand. This is easy to do, but a pain to build. And you don't need me to tell you how battery wire and switch rigs fare at sea. I have all four watches sitting in an incubator now, and I'll post a further video about them when they hatch. I've only rated one real F91W and W86. There are many YouTube videos that have rated several of them, but my conclusion is that these are the watches I recommend for navigation. They're cheap, so you can buy more than one as a contingency against the mishaps that boating so often attracts. So thank you Casio for making this impressive product at such a remarkable price.